Hello from Gardening at Twensa here in Ireland and today we've stepped into the plant room so that I can make my update for orchids that have bloom in November. It's quite sunny today so I'm going to try my best to make sure that the sun isn't behind the camera so anyway we'll see how it goes. Now this month I only have 7 orchids in bloom compared to last month's 10 and 11 the month before. And I think this is a very interesting exercise to make this monthly orchids in bloom uh, video. I started in February of this year and I'm also going to continue to put the numbers of orchids I have in bloom in the title so that, well it's handy for me as well to look back and see how many I had in bloom in any given month. So without further ado, let's go on over and have a look at the orchids. And I'm approaching carefully because of the sunlight. I don't want to blind you. And the first orchid I come across is this wonderful Latoria dendrobium called Lutin Blanc. Now I am most acutely aware that I keep on mentioning this uh, Latoria dendrobium over and over again. And it keeps featuring in all of my videos. And the reason for that is it's such a good flower and I have so many blooms on it. It's absolutely amazing. I've had this plant for a year and I've made a special spotlight video on it, which I'm going to put a link to up above here. So if you want to find out more about Lutin Blanc, then I suggest you have a look at that video. And I won't, I won't take up valuable time in this update talking about it again. Next up, we have the only fowl I currently have in flower, and this is the classic Baldwin's Kaleidoscope, which I've had for over eight years, and it is flowering away on one spike at the moment. Three blooms. It has no more coming, I think. Let's have a look around here. This is the last spike I see in evidence so far, so when this fades, then um, that'll be the end of Baldwin for a bit. Look how this flower here has produced a deeper pink colour. Yeah, it's quite interesting. But anyway, Baldwin's Kaleidoscope, also one that's come up in numerous videos of mine and I'm not going to go on and on about it again. Over here we have the only Cattleya currently in flower. And this one is called King of Taiwan, Dashin number one. So King of Taiwan is the Grex and Dashin number one is this particular one. And the scent is fantastic glorious and rounded and spicy, as all Cattleya scents should be. Really, really lovely. I've had this impressive plant for four and a half years and it has had its ups and downs, not least of all last year when it was covered in buds and I moved the plant too quickly and they all blasted. Oh, it was a terrible day. But this year it's rewarded me with this wonderful single bloom. It's a shame, of course, I don't have more, but um, yeah, we'll see for next year. Unfortunately, this plant is going to have to be divided at some stage in spring, so um, we'll see how it does again next year. And that's the thing with plants that you have longer term. You can chart their progress over a period of time and get to know their little quirks, let just, let's just say. Beside the king is Paphiopedilum Pinocchio. And he is a cutie with long, fluffy, hairy whiskers. I've got two spikes this year. That one there and that one over there, which has already produced two flowers. I've had the plant for three years. It came to me from my friend and it was already a decent size at that stage. So, you know, I didn't have to struggle growing the plant larger as most of us do when we buy things from nurseries. Usually nurseries only sell plants when they're kind of the minimum flowering size. So I lucked out with this one really. And just above it we have the Prostechia cochleata, still in flower. And that looks particularly nice with the sun behind it. We're looking at two flower spikes here. There's another one further over, but these spikes are getting near the end of their lifespan. Now as you can see the spikes like this, this stem here, it's flowered all the way up here and we're flowering, at, there's a bud here at the top that is due to open. So, you know, I may get a few more flowers out of it, but those ones really are um, on the way out. But what I do have is a number of new growths and new sheets on this plant. 
let me see if I can find them. Here's a new growth with a sheath that I do not doubt will produce a flower spike. And two more behind here. I think that one has a sheath. Yeah, there's the sheath. And this other one here, well, it's just opening. And a fourth new growth here at the front also with a sheath. Now this plant really is the full of the pot. We can just see there that new growth is right up against the edge. So I'm probably going to have to pot this on or whatever next year. The pseudobulbs are really, really big. And my friend recently asked for a division of this. And that's because this particular plant, Prostechia cochleata, can flower while the bulbs are small. And in fact, mine did flower when it was quite small. You can see the smaller pseudobulbs at the back and it did flower when it was that small. However, if I were to divide this and give a piece to my friend, I'd be dividing off these enormous pseudobulbs. Now she only has limited space in her house. She doesn't want a big plant, so it just wouldn't be suitable for her, which is a shame. We've moved around to the front now, so I can give you a proper shot of my pride and joy at the moment, my Frag Ainsworthy Eye. And wow, isn't it gorgeous? It's opened more fully since the last video I made and the bud behind, you see that second bud there, is shaping up nicely. I believe that's the third bud coming there. But the main thing is this flower. It's really, really, really pretty. I just love it. I don't have this plant very long, half a year. It was gifted to me by a friend. Um, but this wasn't in spike or anything when I got it. It came into spike a couple of months later, so I'm taking credit for the flower. Yes, I am. Definitely. Oh, I just want to mention, in my last video about this frag, I was talking about how I cultivate this, how I keep the plant sitting in rainwater. And one thing I forgot to mention is that not all frags should sit in rainwater. There are dry frags and there are wet frags. Now I did mention this in my frag repotting video, which I'll put a link to up above, but um, I didn't in the last video just dealing with this particular one. So, you know, basically I think anything with the Bessie eye in its parentage, with Piercy eye in its parentage, and Kovachi in its parentage can take sitting in water. But um, there are others that can't. So do check out before you submerge a plant and uh, potentially drown it. So I've moved around to the back of this display here just so that I can move up and show you the last of my orchids in bloom. And it's this Epidendrum, which is a really, really tall plant, which I've had also for four and a half years and has bloomed reliably. It has two spikes at the moment. And if you look in here, down here it's producing a keiki. And even the keiki is producing some flower buds. So um, yeah, very reliable and easy one. Actually, I think epidendrums generally tend to be quite easy to cultivate. Don't mind that flex in the background. That's just where my fan plugs in, which obviously I've switched off at the moment. Okay, so that was my update on Orchids in Bloom in November, which I hope you liked. And I just wanted to make a little footnote for those of you who took part in my poll on whether or not to discard the virus Cattleya. And thank you all very much. It was very interesting to see the responses because a lot of people were voting with their hearts like I had been and just were saying, hold on to it, keep it isolated, take all the regular precautions, but don't throw it away. And that really was my feeling. But um, in the end, what I had to do is just be a bit hard nosed about it, really. And I decided to throw out the virus Cattleya. It wasn't a very expensive one and um, yeah, you know, it just wasn't worth the risk. So thanks for your help and all the suggestions and all the voting that went on and just thought I'd give you an update on that. And finally, just to let you know that the YouTube problems persist. There are still a number of comments on my videos that I can't see and a number of newly left comments that I can't see. So if I haven't replied to your comment, it's not that I'm being rude, it's just it's invisible to my eyes at the moment. But hopefully this problem will be finished and sorted out soon. Thanks very much for watching and um, that's all for now. Bye.